Greetings and welcome to episode 5 of the Math Olympiad Lecture Series. Today we will be looking at the topic of indices. The objective of this lesson will be for students to be able to apply the indice laws, particularly in problems dealing with the comparison of indices. We're going to start by looking at the 11 laws governing indices. In the first three laws, these are the rules when we manipulate indices with the same base. In law 1, when we multiply a to the power of m with a to the power of n, you get a to the power of m plus n. You essentially sum up the indices. How this works is that when you multiply a by itself m times, followed by another n times, altogether you have multiplied a by itself m plus n times. In law 2, when we divide a to the power of m by a to the power of n, you will get a to the power of m minus n. A simple proof assumes that if m is larger than n, and we write this out as a fraction, you can cancel out a multiplied by itself n times from both the numerator and the denominator, resulting in a multiplied by itself m minus n times. In law number 3, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. What happens is that you are multiplying a to the power of m by itself n times. This results in a rectangular grid of a's, m n of them. An important consideration here is that when there are no brackets written, would the third law still apply? It turns out when unwritten, there is an implicit bracket acting within the power. For example, if we were to take 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4, this will give us 2 to the power of 81 instead of 2 to the power of 12. Law 4 and 5 deal with indices of the same power. In law 4, a to the power of n multiplied by b to the power of n is equal to a b in brackets to the power of n. The proof is simply a rearrangement of the a's and the b's to form n sets of a b terms. In law 5, a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n will give us a divided by b in brackets to the power of n. I will skip the proof of law 5 to the viewer as it is very similar to law 4. Laws 6 to 9 deal with special powers. Law 6 states that a to the power of 0 equals to 1. There is, however, a special case within this special case, and that is a cannot be 0. The proof is a consequence of law 2. If we set m to be equal to n, we will get on the left-hand side a to the power of n divided by a to the power of n, which is 1, and on the right-hand side, we will get a to the power of n minus n, which is a to the power of 0. Law number 7 deals with negative indices. It states that a to the power of negative n gives us 1 over a to the power of n. The proof is also derived from the second law. In this case, when we set m to be 0, we will get 1 over a to the power of n on the left-hand side and a to the power of negative n on the right-hand side. In law 8 and 9, we deal with fractional indices. Law 8 states that a to the power of 1 over n is the nth root of a. The proof goes that since a to the power of 1 is equal to a, and we break that 1 into 1 over n times n, we get a to the power of 1 over n in brackets to the power of n, giving us a. You can see how raising a to the power of 1 over n is reversed when we raise it again by n. Hence, we can conclude that a to the power of 1 over n is the nth root of a. This can be likened to how square root is the reverse of squaring. In law 9, it states that if a power is raised by a fraction like m over n, we simply take the nth root of the nth power of a. The proof is simply a combination of law 3 and law 8. Laws 10 and 11 deal with inequalities involving indices. Law 10 states that if a is less than b, 
And if I raise both sides to the nth power, a to the power of n will still be less than b to the power of n. In law 11, if m is less than n for a base greater than 1, a to the power of m is smaller than a to the power of n. However, if the base lies between 0 and 1, a to the power of m is greater than a to the power of n. With that introduction of the 11 laws, here is a summary sheet of the 11 laws. Let's move on to the problems. Question 1. What is the smallest integer that satisfies 909th root of x being greater than the 606th root of 6? Pause the video here to give this question a good try. We're going to approach this question using the indice laws as fuel for direct reasoning. If we use rule 10, we can raise both sides to the power of n and still maintain the inequality. So a good choice of power is 1818, the LCM of 909 and 606. Rule 9 will help us simplify the indices on both sides, giving us x squared to be greater than 6 cubed. Some quick checking of square numbers will tell us that the next bigger square number is 15 square, which is 225. So the answer is 15. Did you get it? On to question 2. Which of the following numbers is the greatest? Is it 2 to the power of 3024, or B, 3 to the power of 2016, or C, 5 to the power of 1008, or D, 2 to the power of 1008 plus 3 to the power of 1008. Or is it E, 2 to the power of 504 plus 3 to the power of 504 plus 5 to the power of 504? Pause the video here to give this question a good try. We are going to approach this problem by eliminating possibilities. Let's examine option D. 2 to the power of 1008 plus 3 to the power of 1008 is less than 3 to the power of 1008 plus 3 to the power of 1008. And if I add one more uh, 3 to the power of 1008 to this expression, I'll get 3 times 3 to the power of 1008, and that would be 3 to the power of 1009, which is less than 3 to the power of 2016, which is option B, hence eliminating option D. In option E, I have 2 to the power of 504 plus 3 to the power of 504 plus 5 to the power of 504. That is less than 5 to the power of 504 plus 5 to the power of 504 plus 5 to the power of 504. That's only three sets of 5 to the power of 504. I can add two more sets to give us 5 times of 5 to the power of 504. That would be the same as 5 to the power of 505, which is way less than 5 to the power of 1008. Hence, option C is greater than option E, eliminating option E. Going back to the question, we've eliminated two options, leaving us three options left. Looking at these three choices, they have different bases and different powers. That makes it difficult to compare. But if we observe the powers closely, they are all multiples of 1008. So let's look at option A. We can change it to 2 to the power of 3 times 1008. By manipulating this, I can cube the 2 and give us a base of 8. Hence, I get 8 to the power of 1008. Option B becomes 9 to the power of 1008. And now, with all of them having the same power, I just compare the bases. Option B is thus the largest, bigger than option A and bigger than option C. So the answer is option B. Did you get it? With that, we've come to the extension problems. The solution to Lecture 4's extension problems will be found in the info section of Lecture 4. Try these two problems here and check back in Lecture 6 to find the answers to these two. We have come to the end of Episode 5. In the next episode, we'll be looking at a very special type of indice known as the CERT. Do like this video and subscribe to the channel if you would like to know more about mathematics. Thank you.